Hello students, welcome to tablets part 4.2. In this respective video, we are going to study about remaining granulation that is dry granulation as well as direct compression. So let's begin with dry granulation. In this method, the granulation, the primary powder particles are aggregated at high pressure. Dry granulation is a process whereby granules are formed without the aid of any liquid solution. This process is used if the ingredient of the granules are sensitive to moisture or heat. Further, compaction is used to densify the powder and then further form granules. Then the process is carried out using a slugging tool or a roller compactor that is tablet press machine. It is important to note that if a tablet press is used for dry granulation process, the powder may not possess enough natural flow to feed the process you, sorry, a product uniformly into the cavity resulting in weighing degree of densification leading to non-uniform granule when they are milled. Then further this dry granulation already said are used for materials if they are sensitive to heat and moisture. Then the next this is the diagrammatic representation of dry granulation. You can see over here the blend blend can be converted to either uh, to the granules either by either of the technique that is either with the help of your roller compaction or with the help of slugging in roller compaction you can see that the mixed powder is squeezed uh, through two counter rotating rollers to form a compressed sheet the sheets are brittle and break easily into flakes the flakes need careful treatment to break them to granules after which they can be milled to desired size then in slugging in this the original method of dry granulation employed a heavy duty tablet press to compact the dry powder the compacting process in this case is known as slugging and the compacted material is known as slug it is typically 25 mm in diameter and 10 to 15 mm thickness. The hammer mill is ideal to break up the slug to create granules. Further, steps in dry granulation. So, so these are all the steps that are involved in dry granulation. The first one that is weighing of raw materials, then screening, then mixing, then roller compaction or compression to slugs then milling mixing and finally compression to finish tablet in weighing all the active ingredient as well as recipients are weighed accurately then comes sieving or screening so sieving reduces particle size and ensures uniform mixing due to similar particle size it also increases surface area further for this purpose, different sieves can be used. Then comes mixing. Mixing is performed in order to achieve optimum mixing of different ingredients for slugging. Depending upon the formulation, your mix, uh, mixing can be between active ingredient as well as diluent or active ingredient or uh, diluents plus uh, disintegrants. Equipments which are generally used for mixing includes sigma mixer, cone mixer, etc. Then comes roller compactor or compression to slug where tablet press is used. Further is milling. Milling is performed in order to reduce size of the granules which have been uh, obtained from the uh, roller compaction or from slugging. Then is mixing. Here, final mixing is done with specific recipients like that of disintegrants, colorants, flavorants, etc. along with your uh, glidants or lubricants if any and then it is used to compress the finished tablet. Now, 
the different excipients which are used in dry granulation include disintegrants, colorants, flavorants and glidants or lubricants. Then along with the other excipients like that of your fillers, diluents and dry binder if any. Then talking about the advantages of dry granulation, first less number of equipment is required. As compared to that of wet granulation, here you require less number of equipment. Further, no need of moisture or heat. In previous, we saw that either starch paste or any other solvent was required in order to moisten the gra mo moisten to prepare a cohesive dough, and also heat was required in order to dry the granules. However, in dry granulation, there is no any need for any sort of moisture or heat then it requires less space that is as the number of process or steps which are involved in dry granulation is comparatively less than that of wet granulation here the space that is required that is also less and it is also cost effective then talking about disadvantages here pre-compression is required so Already as we have seen that pre-compression either through roller compactors or with the help of slugs a pre-compression is required to convert to a granules. Then the next is it is dust producing that is here whatever the process is there as we are not using any sort of wet binder the dust can be produced comparatively to a greater extent that uh, to your wet granulation then talking about direct compression technique so in direct compression the processing of drug with excipients can be achieved without any need of granulation and related unit operation by simple mixing in a blender formula Formulation ingredients can be processed and compressed into tablet without any of the ingredient having to be changed. This process is called direct compression and it is used in the manufacturing of tablet when formulation ingredient can flow uniformly into the dye cavity. Further, indirect compression can be generally used for first crystalline materials, then free flowing materials and materials having good compressibility properties. So here is the diagrammatic representation of steps involved in direct compression. You can see with the help of diagram the first step that is grinding of your drug right then it is blending your mixing of drug with that of adjuncts then coming to compression and finally compressed to a final tablet. Here basically the steps that are involved in direct compression include weighing of raw material then screening or milling of formulation ingredient that is your active drug substances and recipients then mixing the active drug substances with powder recipients including that of lubricant and then finally compressing the mixed powder into tablet. To produce the tablet by direct compression technique necessitates to include certain grades of excipients to achieve correct powder flow and compression properties. These grades are typically being prepared by specific method such as spray drying or maybe wet granulation, slugging, crystallization etc. to achieve the correct physicochemical properties like that of particle size distribution and flow properties. The various excipients that are included in direct compression include diluents and fillers, then disintegrants, then lubricants or glidants as well as compression aid. Now let's talk about one by one. The first one diluents or fillers. The various diluents or fillers which are used for direct compression technique include spray dried lactose, then dicalcium phosphate, mannitol, sorbitol and microcrystalline cellulose. The disintegrant included in the process are pre-gelatinized starch 
like that of starch 1500 then sodium starch glycolate then cross carmelose sodium like that of acidiazol etc the various glycans or lubricants that are included are glycans like that of talc and colloidal silico uh, silicon dioxide and lubricants like that of magnesium stearate stearic acid etc then talking about compression aid microcrystalline cellulose that is avicel ph102 is commonly used compression aid in direct compression tablet technique of manufacturing tablet then the next one advantages of direct compression first one direct compression method requires less or fewer steps and less equipments therefore the method is potentially less expensive than other method used in tablet manufacturing further tablet manufacturing can be carried out without the involvement of moisture and heat hence product stability can be guaranteed then next is some direct compression recipients possess inherent disintegration properties like that of microcrystalline cellulose then next the tablet prepared by direct compression method generally shows faster dissolution time than those prepared by wet granulation this is because tablet manufactured by direct compression method disintegrates into primary particle state unlike those manufactured by wet granulation method which breaks down into granules first and finally into particle state or what we can call primary particle state then the next is again this technique is comparatively cost effective then the next one disadvantages the first segregation in hopper may occur may be because of variation in particle size or density of uh, densities of the formulation ingredient and may be because of the vibration movement of the hopper then the next is flow problem may occur due to poor flow from hopper to the die cavity and also it may result into wet variation problem then the next one is the choice of recipients used in manufacturing of tablet by dry compression technique is highly restricted since most material do not have inherent binding properties then further tablet defects such as sticking capping and lamination are usually pronounced in tablet manufactured by dry compression techniques so this is all about the different techniques which are used for the purpose of manufacturing of tablet so thank you everyone